If you have one of these engineering samples, laptop CPUs from AliExpress, there's an easy way to get up to 50% more performance by literally spending 10 minutes on them. And here today at the Motion PSUs, I'm showing you exactly how to do that. Moreover, I'm showing you how to get the absolute best performance in overclock if you have an unlocked motherboard, but also how to get the absolute best performance on a locked motherboard, even on the cheapest Chinese motherboard like Huanan C B760 generic 60 bucks motherboard via undervolting as well. And the, my mission on this channel is to be able to cover every single CPU and GPU in the market. So of course, we are also covering those engineering samples. The only thing I ask from you guys is at the end of the video, if this is actually helpful, please drop a like and subscribe. So with that said, let's start tweaking. Now we'll do all that in the BIOS. Now, of course, you can do also that in some Windows software with this kind of CPU because it's fully, fully unlocked. And that's why we're able to also work on a B760. Again, this works on every single motherboard. H610, B660, B760, Z690, Z790, you name it, you can tweak it. What we need to do is we need to go into the advanced and later into the overclocking tab. So first of all, let's go into the advanced options and we need to go into the CPU advanced power management. I will first of all cover all the steps which you need to do either if you have an unlocked motherboard or a locked motherboard. Those things you need to do anyways, okay? So you go into the CPU, advanced power management, and we want to fully unlock the power limits and disable our C states. So C states disabling, actually, I would recommend you disable them, but then you're gonna draw a lot more power. But uh, if you care about power in idle, do not disable these, but I disable them. Then we want to go into configure TDP configuration. Basically, depending on how your motherboard is, this is going to be called like CPU power limit or advanced CPU options, something like that. But you will find the various power limits, and that's what we need. As you can see right now, I have them unlocked. So if you enter here at stock, you're going to have a 55 watts of PL2, which is the long term power limit, and around 150 watts of PL1, which is the short-term burst. We want to set them all to unlocked. So I am setting them to 250 watts because I know it's never gonna get unlocked, but you may just wanna hit all nines and max out the range, okay? You, you could also do that, but I recommend you just set to 250 watts, which in my case is 250,000 everywhere, okay? Just like this. And in every power limit you see, you just want 250 watts. So after you've done that, we are now fully unlocked in our CPU, and we want to go in the actual overclocking tab. Now here, make sure you're running your XMP. Okay, this is very important. Run the XMP at full speed, because RAM speed is also something that's very tweakable, but if you want to see how to tweak the RAM, I have another video on the channel for RAM tuning. Just enable the XMP is going to be good enough to begin with. We want to go into the actual voltage override tab, and here's where things get very different if you have a locked or unlocked motherboard. So what we're doing now, is we are letting our CPU run at full speed, full wattage, and basically getting free performance. But since we can't extend the core ratio more than stock, we need to extend the power limit as much as we can. And we do that via a negative voltage offset. So you don't want to do this if you're overclocking, only do this if you're undervolting. So how you do is you go into core voltage, put it in offset mode if you do have a different motherboard, and put it in minus. And now, what you want to do is basically give it a certain offset. And I recommend you give it 100 because these CPUs are pretty good. But if you want to be really safe that it's not going to crash, give it 50, okay? This basically corresponds to 0 0.05, okay? That's what we are inputting because this is millivolt. This is for core voltage offset, but we also want to give it a negative system agent offset of the same 50. And we also want to give it on the e-cores, still 50. So in total, if we do the cache as well, we're gonna have around 200 millivolts of extra headroom. And you also want to disable the undervolt protection if you have it. Now, by doing this, you go ahead and test it out on a locked motherboard without literally touching any p-core, e-core frequency. We're gonna have a lot, a lot more performance for free about 50% more performance in synthetics. Of course, in gaming, it's gonna be less of a difference, but this is exactly what we wanted. For those of you with an unlocked motherboard, we're gonna get started. If you have a locked motherboard, you can actually drop a like, subscribe, 
close the video and let me know in the comments if this worked for you. Again, different motherboard biases will have different naming. I recommend you guys cross-reference this video with a video on the channel of mine with a different motherboard brand. So check out, let's say you have an Asus motherboard, find any undervolting video, even an old one, I have playlists with an Asus motherboard, and the names are gonna be the same because the procedure I do is always the same. I just change which settings we change. So with that said, for those of you with an unlocked BIOS, okay, you're gonna be able to change the actual uh, frequency of your cores. Now, I can't do it on this motherboard, but I can still show you where it would be. And it would be in overclocking, and you would see something like this. So as you can see at stock, my turbo boost ratio for all P cores is just 38. So we are running at 3.8 gigahertz, whereas a regular i9-2100K at stock, on the P cores, it goes on all cores all the way to 4.9 gigahertz. So 11 more than what we have there. And on the E cores, it goes at around 3.7, okay? This is stock. Of course, on the single thread, it boosts all the way to 5.1, but I don't recommend you guys do a dynamic overclock. So what you want to do is just find your P core ratio in, in your BIOS. And if you want to be super safe, you want to input 47. We have 200 megahertz less than stock, but 0 0.9 gigahertz more than what we are doing here. So it's a massive performance jump. And then, we also want to go and change our E-core ratio to 37, which is basically the stock number. And the cache ratio is locked to the E-core ratio in this CPU. So you want to put 37 there too, without increasing the voltage. Okay, I don't recommend you guys increase the voltage on this CPU very much, even though you can do it. I recommend if you really want to go ahead and increase it, you do a dynamic increase of 50 millivolts. The exact same we undervolted, you want to do in overclocking. What can you reach? maximum if you really want to push it. If you really want to push it with 50 millivolt extra, I find if you have a very good cooling, if you've got direct die on the CPU, you can go and do around 4.9 on an i9 1200HX, and you can do around 3.7 in this CPU. But this video is for every single one of these locked laptop CPUs. So to see your number, you need to go on Google, and literally, you need to Google what's the stock frequency for the CPU desktop. So as you can see, I've done it here. I don't know how much you can see. But basically, if you search it on Google, it says the stock frequency for 1200K is 4.9 and 3.7. You want to do the same for your CPU. So if you have a 1300K, look it up for your CPU and input the values of the stock desktop CPUs into here and give it a little bit more voltage and you're going to be fine. And with this, we actually finished the video. So again, if you want to see the review of this CPU or the build, check out my other videos on the channel. Drop a like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.